Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how you can use the Popcorn FX Library 4D Content Pack to create some really cool magic effects, combine them into a scene. So uh, what you see on the screen right now is a kind of a cool wizard uh, with some flames in the background. He's shooting off bolts of lightning into the sky. We're basically going to be recreating this uh, from scratch, okay? So we're going to be using some of those Popcorn FX Library 40 effects like I told you. And I'll provide a link in the description so you can go and uh, check that out in the content store. In addition, you can find this wizard dude from the Sorcerer and Sorceress pack, uh, content pack. I'm also going to provide a link in the description for that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and just start from scratch. So in our scene, we have a number of different particles. As you saw, I'm going to go to my particle tab here and just delete them all. All right, so we have the blue aura, column thunder, lightning attack, and torch fire. I'm going to shift select all those and just delete them. And we're going to start in the content manager uh, over here and go to our set tab and onto the particles folder. All right, in our popcorn effects library 40, we'll find a number of different uh, effects here. We're going to start with the magic folder. All right, so in the magic folder, the first one we're going to use is this blue aura. Okay, so in the screen, on the scene right now, we don't have any lighting uh, per se. Let's just go to our preview uh, camera just so we have a bit more freedom of movement without uh, worrying about animating the camera. Let's take that other camera there and just make it invisible here. So it doesn't get in our way. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and double click this blue aura. All right, and apply it to our scene root right there. It doesn't really matter where this is applied. It can be applied anywhere. You just have to make sure that you use the correct mesh, uh, which I'm going to show you in just a moment here. In this case, we're going to apply it to our wizard's cloak right here. So let's go ahead and use the popcorn effects uh, tab right here. And under the sampler mesh section right here, we're going to go ahead and use our picker tool and pick the cloak of our character, of our dude right here. All right, now let's go to the front and press Shift S to simulate. You can see, cool, we got this cool looking uh, aura, blue aura right here. If you wanna change the color of that aura, you can go down here and uh, do that. Uh, for example, I like to use the end color, change it to something like white. All right, so it makes it a bit more uh, ethereal looking, angelic looking almost, maybe evil in this case. All right, you can change a number of uh, options here as well, including the brightness. All right, so you can brighten it up like this, make it look a lot more intense. You can change your distortion size and all that stuff. Uh, one that I like to mess around with is the lifetime. All right, so if you change your lifetime to something a little bit longer, you'll see it'll kind of just float up a bit further up into the sky there. Okay, so it creates a much more uh, fiery type effect almost. All right, but I'm going to keep that lifetime relatively low, just almost at the default value right here, because we just want to have this kind of effect right there. Now, we don't have much lighting uh, from this aura. If you want more lighting uh, from the aura affecting your character, you can go down here to the GI settings and make sure that you have uh, the global illumination enabled up here, as well as in your viewport using this option right here. And you can change your global illumination scale right here like this. All right, and you can create that sort of... Uh, ghost-like effect, all right? We'll just kind of leave that a little bit lower because we're going to use the lightning basically to illuminate our character's face. Okay, lots of values you can mess around with right there, but I'm going to go ahead and just stop this. And for now, we're going to go to our scene manager and I'm going to disable the uh, blue aura right now since we want to focus only on the next uh, item, the next popcorn effects that we're going to be adding, which is the lightning attack, all right? So the lightning attack, this one you have to have in the correct position. So I'm going to just apply it to our scene here. And you can see it'll add to the bottom of the scene there. And I need to go ahead and press the W hotkey to uh, bring up our movement gizmo. And I'm going to make it align it to the top of my character's staff right here. Okay, so just like this. And uh, right up there. All right. Just so the little uh, edge of the staff is poking through. You can rotate it if you want to go along with the uh, staff rotation. Just like, like so. All right. And there we go. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to right click on this uh, dummy now and select link and link it to my staff. All right, so there you go. So now it'll follow the staff along uh, like this. You can see the movement and now it's up here. All right. Okay, so uh, let's press uh, shift S to simulate this. Now the really cool thing about this lightning attack is if you pay close attention, it's actually striking the columns around the wizard dude, okay? So you get some, see some sparks coming off right there. Now, in order to achieve that, you need to make sure that you go to your, uh, select your object, any object really, it can be any object, for example, this model left A, and go to your physics tab and make sure that you have the bound type select, uh, set to self mesh. Now, if I set this bound type on this particular column to a sphere, for example, take a look at what happens with the effect when we simulate, okay? So if I simulate now, 
Notice that the left side here is not really, it's kind of hitting this non-existent sphere right here, okay? The other side, however, is, you know, uh, attacking all of the other columns, all right? So uh, in order to achieve that strike on the actual mesh, you need to go ahead and uh, select your item, uh, the prop, whatever you're using. Make sure you go into your physics tab and change that to self mesh, okay? That will have a much more accurate striking effect on your uh, character. So shift S again, simulate, boom, now you can see it's striking the column. All right, perfect. Now you can modify a number of different values on this lightning. Uh, I'm not going to really worry about that on this particular effect. We're going to talk about that on the next one, which is the column attack. On this one, what I want to do, however, is I want to go to my popcorn effects tab, and at the very top, I'm going to change my emit to off. So it's not going to emit right away. Let's scroll through our timeline here. We're going to have it emit when our character is like ugh, right, about, right about there, maybe frame 220 something like that, okay? And then we can choose our emit, uh, maybe let's go a bit, uh, a few frames earlier, something like that, and emit on, okay? So that means from here to here, we're not going to have any emission, but from there, the emission will start. Ah, okay, pretty cool stuff. And you can end the emission the same way. If you want to change your emission, you can go to the F, uh, press F3 to go into your timeline. Let's close down our project track for now. Uh, select the lightning attack. And uh, under here, you need to go to emit. And you can see if we scroll out of our, uh, zoom out of our timeline a little bit here. Uh, this is our project beginning, so it doesn't really matter. Our project begins at this little green arrow right here. And from here, there'll be nothing. And then uh, it starts emitting right there. And you can click and drag these keyframes here to move it to wherever you want. Okay, that's just so you can uh, customize it further. Okay, good stuff. So let's go ahead then, and I'm going to just disable that as well. I'm also going to uh, make them invisible. Actually, let's leave the lightning attack in, uh, visible for now, because the next effect I'm going to add is the column thunder. This one's pretty cool. I'm just going to double click and add that to my scene. And the reason I left that visible is because I'm going to align it using this control L uh, align to, or you can click up here and align it to my other dummy, the lightning attack dummy, X, Y, and Z. So now it's in the exact same place. Pretty cool. Okay. And we also need to link this to the staff as well. So we'll right click, select link, link to staff. All right. And then we'll go to our C manager here and make that invisible. Okay. So now we're focusing on the column thunder. So let's press shift S to simulate that. This one's pretty cool. We have this kind of uh, vortex at the bottom there and this column of thunder just kind of shooting off like this. There's a lot of cool uh, stuff you can modify here. Like the, uh, if we go over here to the global scale, It'll basically make everything larger. That's your overall uh, high-end uh, uh, hierarchy there of, of your uh, modification to your uh, effect. Uh, you can change your start color and end color. If you want a start color of red, for example, you can go ahead and do that. And your end color will be blue. So uh, as the lightning bolts are starting to disappear, they'll change to blue. I can change it to something like yellow, for example. Maybe a bit more accurate, uh, a bit more fiery. But I like to have, a, you know, a start with a kind of a, a very white, uh, intense, electrical charge at the beginning and change my end color to something a little bit more like a light kind of pewter uh, blue or cyan blue, maybe even a little bit dar uh, darker than that. All right. And uh, then you can change the start opacity like this. If you change it to something like that, then the you won't see the white part really. You can change the start opacity to uh, larger amounts. Uh, don't want to mess around with those too much. Um, the brightness one is the one that really affects this particular effect. You change your brightness up like this, you can see, wow, we get, uh, you know, some really intense uh, lighting going on there. Uh, we'll change that brightness to something a little bit lower. I like to achieve, uh, I like to adjust the, uh, the lifetime here as well. So the lifetime, you'll have a bit more of uh, lingering uh, lightning bolts, which I think is pretty cool. And also these, uh, like, bolts of light streaming out from our vortex there uh, last longer as well. And you can adjust your lifetime randomness. You can change your flash ball size to something smaller, okay, like this. There you go. Uh, it really depends on the effect you're going for. I like to keep it fairly small and intense and maybe adjust my lifetime to something a little bit smaller there as well. And the light intensity is, is important because if you increase the light intensity, you can see it kind of has a more intense effect on the, each particular bolt. However, you'll notice that with this column uh, of thunder, we're not really lighting up the surrounding scene. Now, again, you can go down to your global illumination settings here, uh, adjust the lightning death branch, whatever it is there, <laughs> okay, and you can just modify that. And you can see when we increase that to like a level of like 50, for example, then we start to see the lightning bolts uh, light up the uh, surrounding columns, which is really cool. 
Okay, so that's what, uh, kind of what we want to achieve. You can also increase the exposure bloom as well on your, on your bolts to kind of have a bit more of a, uh, dreamy kind of, uh, bloomy effect like that. I like to keep that fairly low myself because I like to have the more independent look, uh, bolts just like that. Okay, so that's really about all there is to this effect. Uh, a lot of parameters you can adjust in, in various ways. Uh, have fun with it on your own time. I'm not going to worry too much about it right now. But uh, what I'm going to do is just, uh, same thing. We're going to turn that emission off at the very beginning. We're going to go to, I think it was frame 200 and something, uh, 215 maybe, or 25. Maybe, uh, I think we were something about here. And then we'll emit on. Okay, so same thing. Cool. So now what we have is if we turn all these on together is if we go to the be very beginning here, uh, let's uh, take a look at our character. Let's make that uh, dummy invisible there. Now what we have going on is this. We got this uh, aura and then uh, lighting column of thunder or column of lightning there and, and lightning bolts striking the individual columns. All right. So it looks pretty cool. We have the blue lighting, but we want to add a bit more atmospheric uh fiery lighting into the background there as well because you can see um, our character's face will light up with, with the bolts so it's pretty cool that uh, the lightning actually lights up his face whereas over here his face will be dark um, but let's add a bit more like uh, atmospheric uh, rim lighting to the back of our character there uh, contrast lighting so let's go to our content tab popcorn effects library 40 now we're going to go into weapons and explosives and in here we have this torch fire I'm just going to bring that over here now you need to place this in a particular uh, spot because the torch fire will emit from the dummy itself. So if I press Shift S to simulate this, okay, now we have the, uh, let's actually turn off all the other ones for now. Focus only on the torch fire. Okay, so let's simulate this one. All right, so we want to have a kind of a nice uh, rim lighting behind our character, just like this, okay? And you can adjust the, uh, the uh, position of this as well. Let's go ahead and maybe bring it a little bit closer. And a bit more to the side there as well. Okay, there we go. All right, now it's kind of lighting up the side there a bit more. Uh, a lot of parameters you can adjust for the torch fire as well. Um, you can adjust the color as well, like I showed you before. The uh, start brightness and end brightness. Okay, you can see the middle getting a bit more intense there. If we bring that down, it's a bit more scattered. Okay, uh, the end brightness will have the same effect there as well. The uh, emission right here, if we increase the emission, you can see it creates a bit more intensity and you can see a bit more distortion as well in the smoke uh, on the column in the back there. If we take that emission level down, you can see it's a bit less intense. All right. And the fire intensity as well, adjust that value and bring that way up, bring that uh, down like that. If you bring the intensity down, obviously we're not going to have much to go on there. But uh, obviously the, one of the main uh, parameters that affects this is the global scale. Okay, so if we pump up the global scale, it'll just enhance all those values, all right, and create a much more like uh, bush on fire, like Moses and the fiery bush kind of effect like that, okay? Uh, something cool like that. And again, the other values, you can adjust the wind turbulence and wind force. Uh, you can also do the exposure bloom for this one, which kind of creates a kind of a weird effect. So I recommend kind of staying away from that, from that for too much. And uh, here you can also adjust the illumination as well, effect like this, and take that down, something very low, uh, whatever whatever value you would like to achieve. Okay, I'll just kind of leave that uh, something a bit lower, this one as well. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, work with that. This will be our atmospheric lighting right there. You bring that a bit further down, and we need to bring our global scale down there as well, because that's kind of messing with our lighting. There you go. I just want to have this, you know, kind of torch fire slash atmospheric lighting right here. Okay, we'll work with that level right there. Okay, cool. So that's uh, basically it. Let's go ahead and activate all those. We'll switch to our, uh, make the dummy invisible, switch to our animated camera here, and give ourselves a playback. All right, so now we have the aura, the fire, and the lightning all together. All right, it's pretty cool stuff, all right? So that's how you can achieve that, uh, you know, really in a couple minutes here, combine all these magic effects into a really cool looking effect. Um, I think maybe the aura could be a bit less intense on this one, for example. Like, uh, let's go to our aura and just uh, change our uh, emission flux there. We can actually just uh, simulate it there, just to kind of take a look. All right, yeah, emission flux can be a little bit lower there. All right, and uh, brightness, maybe take that down as well. 
and distortion intensity. Have it a bit lower just so it's not distorting his face as much there. All right, and in color opacity, we can adjust that as well. So it's just kind of very subtle. All right, cool. All right, so that's really about all I want to show you guys in this tutorial. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or, or comments, you can check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.